Sorry, I have to respond to someone who keep who's calling me. So, okay, so while we wait for folks to come on, I guess I will just chat to myself. Um, <clears throat> I was supposed to do this yesterday morning and I have no idea what happened, but I completely spaced and I didn't realize I didn't remember that I was supposed to do a live Saturday morning until Saturday afternoon. But my schedule is is basically Friday evening on Facebook, Saturday morning on YouTube. But it has been a crazy week and I have lost track um, <laughs> of everything that I've been doing. But um, oh, that was weird. I got a really weird text from someone that says, I'm going to come come on. So I, I'm going to come cone on. I'm not sure what they were trying to tell me. But while I have you here, I'm going to pull up. This is about the benefits of raw feeding. And I'm just going to pull up, you know, one of the many sites that has a list of all the benefits. And um, we're going to talk about them. And we're going to try to make this a quick video because um, I make these videos way too long. And I can't imagine anyone has an hour to sit around and listen to me talk. So, um just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I should have done this before I started the live. Okay, here we go. So the whole point of this video is to talk about the benefits of raw feeding. When it comes to raw feeding, like when I'm in raw feeding groups and I see people who are brand new to raw feeding, um, what does your t-shirt say? It says, I look normal, but I talk to dogs. <laughs> um, but so when people are new to raw feeding, they hear about all these benefits and then they have disappointment because maybe they're not experiencing the same thing with their dogs. And as we all know, n all dogs are different. So although these are benefits that people have been experiencing, it may not necessarily happen with your dog. It may not necessarily happen right away or um, it may not happen at all. I guess I just said that twice, but anyways, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, I think that we have different varying levels of how these things work with our dogs. And I have five dogs. So I was going to go down the list and just tell you, um, hi, Diane, tell you um, what I've experienced with my dogs. So cleaner, healthier teeth um, and fresher breath. Yes, my dogs have fresh breath, but one of the things that I need to admit is that I've been feeding raw for close to seven years. I don't remember what their breath smelled like before feeding raw. Um, I barely remember what their poop, in fact, no, I don't remember what their poop smelled like before feeding raw. And for three of our dogs, we switched them to raw cold turkey. Scout and Zoe started at six weeks old and Apollo started the day he got here when he was seven months old. So I don't know what it was like before them before raw. So we only have um, Rodrigo and City for that. I'm sorry, I'm my curls are getting in my eyelashes and tickling them. <laughs> so um, cleaner teeth, fresher breath. Yes, my dogs have fresh breath unless they um, eat something gross outside. Um, and yes, they have gorgeous teeth. Uh, Scout or Rodrigo and Sydney have a little bit of plaque along their teeth. And I honestly think that it could go completely away if I fed raw meaty bones or recreational bones year round. I don't, and the reason why is because um, my boyfriend doesn't want them eating bones on the floor in the house, and I don't blame him. Um, and so that's one of our like agreements. And so they eat the bones outside, which is gonna be late spring and through the summer, every Saturday or Sunday, I sit out there with a book and they sit out there and they eat gnaw on their bones. And by the end of the summer, their teeth are a lot better. Um, there is a really cool product, and I wish I would have brought it in here for this live. It's called One TDC. So if you go to one, like the number one, tdc.com, and I'll actually put it in the comments, one tdc.com. So this is a um, periodontal um, and anti, like joint, su periodontal joint supplement. I think they're not allowed to call themselves an anti inflammatory based on the um, FDA. I don't, I don't know those rules, but um, it's this little cream and it, the dogs love it. It tastes good to the dogs. And you just take it, squeeze it on your finger and rub it along their gums. And it will, like within a week, you'll see a huge difference in your gums. So I think that that's great for dogs that have noticeable plaque issues and they're not um, going away. Right now I have one bottle left. The company sent me a bunch. I have one bottle left and I actually use it on my cat. 
because my cat has some really bad plaque and tartar on his teeth that's really hard to keep um, under control, even though he doesn't eat a kibble diet. So cleaner, healthier teeth, yeah, I think that there that is the case. But keep in mind that there are dogs that have, um, for whatever reason, maybe it's genetics, maybe it's the fact that they only eat like maybe freeze dried or ground raw food because it's the act of grinding your teeth against the bone and cartilage that cleans the teeth. So if your dog is only eating ground raw, like my cat eats a mixture of ground raw and um, can or wet food. So that's why my cat doesn't get the teeth cleaning benefits. So if that's the case, you're going to have dogs that um, that are going to have plaque stuff. Um, Desan says it takes plaque off. Yeah, actually it does. What it does is it basically loosens it up so that um, it just starts wearing down. I mean, I don't think it, it will remove the plaque on its own. I still think that, you know, you still want to do the raw meaty bones and things like that, maybe bully sticks or some type of chew um, to actually have them start rubbing it off. But yeah, it does a really good job. It makes it so that it's easier for me to like brush it off because it makes it porous so it, it'll come off. Um, better weight control, yeah. I mean, I think it is better weight control on a raw food diet. The reason why is because you're not eat, feeding a diet filled with starches and sugars and and then um, you know other ingredients that basically lead to weight gain. However, I made the mistake of overfeeding my dogs because I, when I first started raw, I made a couple of really dumb mistakes. Um, but I didn't know. You learn and you grow. But when I would look at the raw food calculators, I didn't understand if the amount they calculated out for you, if that was per meal or per day. And so I was feeding it per meal, but I reduced it down some because it seemed like too much. It didn't occur to me for months that I was overfeeding my dogs. On top of that, um, Sydney had a partial cruciate tear. So I didn't adjust her diet to account for her lower level of exercise while she was he healing. So she gained weight. And so I already had, you know, Rodrigo and Sydney were already overweight because they were on a kibble diet and because I was you know, overfeeding them then. And the only exercise they really got was, you know, walks and going to the dog park. I didn't really actively work on exercise with my dogs. I didn't know. I thought that putting them outside and letting them run around was exercise. I didn't realize that dogs really need a high level of exercise every day. Um, but, you know, live and learn. So I have fat dogs. Um, when I switched them to raw, Rodrigo lost a lot of weight. Sydney trimmed down, but then she gained because I was overfeeding them. But once I was able to get everything down, I basically figured out with the work of a friend. I don't know if you guys are over on Facebook with Ronnie Lejeune. She has the blog um, op, um, Optimal Canine and Perfectly Rawsome. And she also has the group um, Raw Feeding University. She helped me come up with an exercise plan for Sydney, which, which was basically we were moving at her rate. So instead of me trying to take her on a long walk, I would just basically walk with her on our property. We have five acres and we would just walk around the property. So sometimes it would take forever, you know, 30, 40 minutes just to do a loop around five acres because we were, she was slowing down. I would let her sit when she was tired, but we would make it happen. And we would basically walk for 15 or 20 minutes and then stop. And eventually that 15, 20 minutes was going around the property two times because she got stronger and stronger. And once I in, um, incorporated Win Pro Mobility, which is the joint supplement she gets, that was a game changer for her. I mean, it was just absolutely fantastic. And I'll put, um, I have an affiliate link. So I wanna make sure, make that clear. This is an affiliate link for Win Pro. But this is my favorite joint supplement for my dogs. So that helped her drop weight. With Rodrigo, he has EPI, which is exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. That basically means he does not have the enzymes in his body to digest and absorb nutrients. And without me putting them into his body, he will starve to death. So um, that is why he started losing weight. It was digestive issues that only now, like within a few months ago, was diagnosed with he had a pancre pancreas issue. What I didn't, I thought it was just, he just had digestive issues, but it was his pancreas. But anyway, so yeah, better weight control. Um, improved digestion, ah, Rodrigo. Yes, there is improved digestion. And as I understand it, kibble can be difficult to digest because it's these hard pebbles that the dogs need to somehow break down and absorb the nutrients in it. Also, synthetic nutrients, you know, that they feel 
into the kibble, that's harder for dogs and humans. In fact, you know, synthetic vitamins don't work on me. I have to try and get the whole food vitamins. Um, but basically they go into your body and your body has to break it down and get what it needs. And if you have a dog that already has um, a, a digestive issue, which was Rodrigo, it's going to be even harder for them to absorb the nutrients. So yeah, it is better digestion that um, Sydney never had a problem with digestion, but Rodrigo did. And once I switched him to raw, he did really great for probably a year. Um, no, for probably nine months. And then I had to start adding um, a digestive supplement to his diet. I added full bucket and that was the only thing that really helped him. Um, and what happened was he just started getting, um, what's the word, diarrhea and loose stool like daily. And because he was doing it daily, his anal glands weren't naturally impacting. So we got, you know, really impacted anal glands. It was a hot mess, but I got him back on track, but he still needed the, um, the digestive supplement. What looking back, I wish I knew that it wasn't necessarily his digestion. It was his pancreas that was causing the problems. Um, Yvonka says my rescue pit bull was started on raw at two years. It's been nine months now. His teeth got better. Thanks to some raw meaty bone, but he still has some tartar high up on his canines and his gums bleed. If his gums are bleeding, because he's chewing on things that could be, you know, just sort of like the irritation of the bones rubbing on the gums. If it's, of course, I'm going to always say, if you have a concern, talk to your vet because I'm not a vet and I can't possibly tell you what's going on with your dog. I can only share what I've seen with my dogs, but I know that with my dogs, when they're too rough, Rodrigo is a very rough chewer. And so sometimes that can happen with his um, gums. I did know that once I use, I use one TDC on him last year and that because it reduced all the tartar around the high, like what you're talking about, the high end part, he didn't have problems with bleeding gums again. Um, R Rhonda says, I probably give my dog too much starch rice, but they are still lean. I speed walk them two, two and a half miles every day. And that was my mistake is I wasn't offsetting that excess starch with exercise because, you know, dogs will burn that off as energy. My dogs weren't. Um, so shinier, healthier coat. And I'm going to combine this re with reduction of allergies. So um, I can't really tell you if my dog's coat's got shinier and healthier. And to be perfectly honest, and actually before I move on, did I go, did I, t we talked about, we talked about teeth. One thing I also wanted to say about teeth is I know tons of people who feed kibble who have dogs with gorgeous teeth. So, you know, feeding raw isn't the only way to get there, but shinier, healthier skin and coat. I, my dogs have, like I said, I have five dogs, three of them all the whole time they've been with us, they've been on a raw food diet. So I don't have a comparison. I do know that my dogs that are blue healer mixes, well, four of them are, but one, the two that have more of the blue healer coat, their coats are softer. Um, Rodrigo's coat is super soft. Um, but I, again, I don't remember how his coat was seven years ago. Um, so I couldn't tell you if this is a diet or if this is just my dogs. I think it's probably a little bit of both. Um, what I can tell you is that Rodrigo used to have skin rashes, like insane. And Sydney used to have like yeasty skin, that smell and kind of not sticky, but that weird texture of the skin. Um, and changing the diet helped tremendously. With Rodrigo, the skin rashes stopped immediately and completely cleared up. And you wouldn't, within a week, you wouldn't think anything was wrong with his skin. Um, Sydney, I had to do a few steps further. And what I did is I mixed, um, apple cider vinegar and water 50 50 and I would wipe down her skin every evening I did this for five days and then I would massage it with coconut oil and then same thing with her ears I used a spray bottle and I would mist her ears massage her ears to make sure that the apple cider vinegar and water really got into the ears and then I would wipe her ears out to clean them and then put a little bit of coconut oil and massage that into her ears every day for a week she's never had a yeast issue since that was years ago so I think that isn't, I think also raw feeding helps, but I think it's also the act of when we start raw feeding, we also start educating ourselves about other things and finding other natural solutions. And that helps as well. So reduction of allergies. So, okay. So I said, when I did the Facebook live, I said this, and I always like to differentiate between allergies 
and sensitivities. And I actually started doing this because Billy uh, answers pet food starts doing, he does this with people as well because people will tell them, well, my dog is allergic to chicken. And he's like, mm, probably not. So allergies is what you get when you get the histamine reaction. So I have allergies or hay fever where, you know, you get the the itchiness or the sneezing, the itchy eyes, those are allergy symptoms. Sensitivities or an intolerance is when you have the digestive response to something. So when a dog is allergic to a protein and then it's because he's getting diarrhea or things like that, it's actually a sensitivity. So when it comes to raw feeding, in some cases, if a dog is allergic to chicken or you've you think that your dog is allergic to a protein while you're feeding a kibble diet. When you switch to raw, you'll find that your dog actually isn't allergic to that protein. So it could be a combination of things in the kibble, or it could be how it was processed. It could be where it was sourced. There's all kinds of things. And that's what makes doing like an elimination diet when you're feeding kibble difficult because there are literally, you know, 50, 60 ingredients in each bag. But, um, that wasn't my case. My dogs actually do have trouble with chicken. So I just don't feed chicken. And Rodrigo also has trouble with lamb. Um, he can do like lamb bones, but he can't really eat a lamb meal for too many days in a row. Turkey, pheasant, and beef. And it also depends on where it's sourced. So he does better on grass-fed, grass-finished beef because, you know, he's hoity-toity, I guess. And um, then he does on grain-fed beef. And there are some brands that he can't do well at all. I mean, not so much brands, but farms where I can, I have one farm that I source meat from and he does really great on pork usually, but when it comes from this farm, he doesn't do well. And he had a vet who since passed away who said it could be something as simple as the farm that's near them sprays chemicals on their grass and the weather blows it over and it, those animals are exposed to it. And my dog could literally be just that sensitive. I don't know if that's the case, but that's what I have to say about intolerances. So raw feeding can help um, because it's improving the, the digestion and it's taking away all those excess ingredients. Now, allergies. Rodrigo also has environmental allergies. So it did improve environmental allergies. It Before feeding raw, he used to lick his paws until they developed sores. He would basically, you know, that sound of licking. He can lick for 30 minutes. We would have, to, it was just freaking us out. And I was constantly giving him Benadryl because I didn't know any different. Um, not that Benadryl is bad. I just don't think it's good for your dog on a daily basis, which is what I was doing years ago. Now he just hardly has any of those issues. And it's just a matter of getting his digestion right, getting his immune system so that it's stronger. And he just doesn't react to many of the things that he used to react to. Um, Yvonka says he is an aggressive chewer and his gums bleed a tiny bit when he chews on his toys. Yeah, he spends most of his early life in a cage and was fed really low quality kibble up until I got him. So that could be the problem. Um, Miss J says, can you do a blood test to find what a dog is allergic or sensitive to? Actually, there's a saliva test. Um, Glacier Peak Holistic offers a saliva test. And you just basically send that in. I did that for Rodrigo a couple years ago. And oh my gosh, I was blown away by the test. I didn't agree with everything on the test because for instance, it said, well, he is sensitive to chicken. So you also shouldn't feed him chicken eggs. Rodrigo has no problems with chicken eggs. Um, it said that, you know, he's sensitive to quail and pheasant. He actually can't do pheasant, but he does fine on quail. But the test combines those two together. Um, but for the most part, I found it really eye opening. And what was best was that they actually got on the phone with me and went over the test and um, answered my questions. And I had follow up questions and they got those answers to me, too. I think it was I think I got the test for like seventy dollars. It was probably the best seventy dollars I've ever spent on a test. I cannot tell you how happy I am about it. And I honestly think that it's worth the investment if you are trying to figure out what's going on with your dog. Oh, and only because they follow up with that discussion to go over everything with you. I think if I got the test alone, I would have been like, I don't know what to do with this. But that conversation really made a difference. Rhonda says, I started my dogs on raw organs and chicken turkey next, but they all got diarrhea with chicken feet. Can it be too rich for them? Um... So I'm not sure if they got diarrhea with the chicken feet or with the organs, but it could be. I mean, when I get like 
the necks, sometimes the necks are a bit fatty uh, and it could be too much fat. And the chicken feet, I don't know. I've never had that experience. I mean, every dog is different. One thing I found is that when I'm new, when I, when, when I was new to DIY raw feeding, the best advice I ever got was to back it up a little bit before we start, um, to back it up a little bit before, okay, I got distracted because I looked at the time. Um, at 7.58 and I have to leave at like 8.05. But what I wanna say is when it comes to raw feeding, if you notice that your dog gets diarrhea, then back it up to the place where your dog didn't have diarrhea and then go slowly forward from there. So if, for instance, if you're feeding, you know, chicken quarters and your dog is doing great, you add in a little bit of heart and your dog is doing great and you add in some ground beef, your dog is doing great. Then you add in some liver, boom, you have diarrhea. Go back to when you were feeding ground beef because your dog was doing great. And then a week later, add in half the amount of diet of of, I was going to say diarrhea of liver and see how your dog does. And it's just a matter of just slowing it down. And this goes back to every dog is different. So every dog will react differently. Um, Kathy says, well, I rescued another Frenchie yesterday. Congratulations. What, what am I thinking? I have not perfected this raw thing yet. Can um, put new dog directly on raw or should I do a slow transition? You know, you can do either or. Um, with Rodrigo and Sydney, I did a slow transition with all three of our other dogs. I did it cold turkey with no, and I had no issues with any of them. Again, every dog is different. So you have to decide how your dog is going to do. If you try to do cold turkey and your dog does great, then you're great. But if you try to do cold turkey and your dog has explosive diarrhea, then you know that you need to go slower with that dog. Miss J is, what was the name of the saliva test again? Um, Glacier, I'll write it down. Glacier Peak, uh, Glacier Peak Holistics. And you can get it on Chewy.com. Um, Yovanka says, I cannot find a safe raw goat's milk here in Greece. I have been feeding Greek goat's milk yogurt daily, a heavy tubs with each meal. Can that work as a substitute? Yeah, absolutely. And you can look for commercial goat's milk. One thing that I found is that if it's been um, pasteurized and it's not going to have the same benefits, I do know that there are people here in America that you just go to the store and buy goat's milk from the store. It's usually in the natural section, but I haven't found it here at my stores. So I have to actually go. So I'm going to speed through the rest of the list and then um, I will keep an eye out for questions because your questions take priority over this list. So harder, smart, smaller, less smelly stools. Absolutely. That has been my experience with all of my dogs. Initially with Rodrigo, it wasn't, but that was because he had um, that pancreas thing. Once that got resolved, his poop got smaller too. Increased mobility in older animals. All my dogs were switched to raw as young animals. So it wasn't like I got to see a huge transition, but I do think that a raw diet contributes to the fact that Rodrigo and Sydney are almost 10 years old and Rodrigo is still faster than all of our dogs, including our puppy. Um, more energy and stamina going back to that Rodrigo kicks butt. I mean, he's racing around our property. It's amazing. Um, and he just, he doesn't have the, when Rodrigo and Sydney were younger, when they were on kibble, they actually had joint issues where their joints would bother them. And, um, they don't have that. Well, Rodrigo doesn't have that issue anymore. Sydney, she does have arthritis and she does, you know, has, I think when you have a cruciate tear or a partial cruciate tear, you're always going to be a little uh, wonky about it. And so um, he is, you know, or she always has a little like trouble getting up, getting down. Um, but she still is a lot more active and doing a lot better than what I would have expected. You know, and I know that if she were on kibble, she would not be doing as well as she is today. Um, strength in the immune system. Absolutely. My dogs never get sick. Uh, Scout got sick once. He got a fever three or four years ago. Um, but that's about it. My dogs never get sick. Um, which goes to the last thing, which is you save money because you have fewer vet visits. My dogs only go to the vet once a year for um, blood work. They are just really healthy, healthy dogs and improve liver, pancreatic and bowel health. Again, I, I agree with, I agree with the entire list. However, I honestly believe that um, if we all sat in a room together and started talking about our experiences, there were 10 people in a room, we would have 10 different experiences. If we were talking about 10 people, well, I'm not going to do the math right there. I was about to do some crazy fast math and it would have been wrong. But 
I wanted to say that if you are new to raw feeding or you've been feeding raw for a while and you look at these benefits or you hear about what people are talking about in groups about how their dog changed and you're not seeing that with your dog, don't fret. Don't think that you're doing something wrong. Every dog is different and every dog is going to react differently. And so what I have had to learn to do is instead of comparing myself to other raw feeders, I just focus on the dogs in front of me and how well they're doing. And that's all there. it comes down to it. Rhonda says, can my almost 14 year old benefit from starting a raw diet now? Absolutely. Absolutely. I honestly think that unless a dog has a compromised immune system where their white blood count is very low and um, but even then, if I had a dog that had a compromised immune system, instead of feeding them raw, I would probably go with an HPP, you know, the high pressure pasteurization os uh, option, because although HPP food doesn't mean that there's no bacteria, but they're still less bacteria than what your raw food is. And I would probably start there and see how my dog does. And then maybe if my dog does great, incorporate more non-HPP food. It just depends on how they do. I prefer non-HPP because I just don't think it's necessary. But I honestly think that a fresh food diet can benefit any dog, even if it's just a half diet where you're feeding kibble one meal and raw another meal. Or if you're feeding kibble, but you're adding freeze dried raw and you're adding, you know, scrambled eggs and ground beef and bone broth, just adding that fresh food to a dog's meal will make such a huge difference, I believe that, because I saw that when I initially transitioned my dogs. Um, Rodrigo and Sydney ate a hybrid diet. They ate raw in the morning, kibble in the evening. And that is when we saw the most benefits, the first three months of eating that way until we ran out of kibble. And yeah, there was a honeymoon period because as I understand it, when you introduce fresh food or drastically switch a dog's diet. It's just like when you're switched from one kibble to another and your dog wasn't doing great on the first kibble, but they're doing fantastic on the second kibble. It's not necessarily the second kibble that's making your dog do great. It's the eliminating the first kibble that's improving your dog, if that makes sense. So my dogs were doing great because they were no longer eating kibble. They still have some underlying issues that I had to still deal with even on a fresh food diet you know, namely with Rodrigo, his digestive issues, but they still were doing so much better than they were on kibble. So I honestly think that the incorporation of fresh food in any diet is what's key. If you want to go so far as the feeding a raw diet or go so far as feeding a home cooked diet, more power to you. I think it's all of it is fantastic. So I have to wrap this up because someone is coming to pick me up because I'm going to breakfast. Thank you so much for visiting with me. Before I let you go, I want to tell you um, August 1st, 2020 in Seattle, Washington, um, my friend and I are hosting the first annual Seattle Natural Pet Expo. This is an event for both dog lovers and cat lovers. It's not a raw food event, but it will be discussed. We will have speakers like Rodney Habib of Planet Paws, um, Billy Hookman of Answers Pet Food, the two crazy cat ladies, and we will have a dog tract and a cat tract. So it's going to be a one day event. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm going to put the link to my site so you can just go check it out and see what it is about. But I want to start telling people about it because it is going to be a kick ass event. Thank you guys for visiting with me this morning. I'm sorry that I'm a day late. I will do better next week. Bye, guys.